uh, he joins us live here on International Live. And uh, before we get to our guest, Dan, how, how do people listen to us in the United Kingdom? We're broadcast Kingdom? on uh, Leicester 107.5 FM, which is here in England, uh, UK. And that's um, played on our Friday drive time hour, 5 till 6 p.m. Fantastic. So big shout out to all our listeners listening in Leicester. So uh, across the world. So John, uh, give me and Dan a little bit of an introduction on yourself. I see you've got the giant guitars behind you, which is also uh -huh. just fantastic. So tell me and John, John, tell me and Dan a little bit about you. Uh, I am a little older musician who's been doing music for most of his life, and I have a band called Tombstones in Their Eyes which I started about six years ago, and uh, we are doing well, recording records, uh, you know, raising our profile, getting known around the world, and I'm very happy to have to be on the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, this, 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 you're, you're uh, helping us out today by bringing us some great music, my friend. You, 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 you're definitely uh, bringing I'm us some good I'm living the guitars on the back of the wall there, John. Yeah. Yes. There's a lot of guitars. <laughs> yeah, this is my basement studio. Uh, there's more. And uh, you got, you know, I, I've definitely had an addiction to buying equipment, as many musicians <laughs> do. They're, yeah, they've yeah. come and they've gone. <laughs> yeah, my friend's got one at the minute, actually. It's getting quite expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get back. Every time he sees a new guitar, he's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how did you get started doing this music thing? Uh, music's always been a love of mine, and, uh, you know, for some years, I, uh, I grew up, uh, during the early sort of punk rock days in Southern California, and, uh, uh, that kind of changed my life and made me want to do music, and, uh, so I've done a lot of little projects over the years, and, uh, like I said, it's just a big part of, uh, of who I am, you know, music, and, uh, it's also a release, you know, it's a catharsis. It's a way of getting emotions out. How would you sort of describe your music? Uh, the music we make with Tombstones in Their Eyes is sort of fits into the psych modern psychedelic or psych rock, they call it, uh, or shoegaze, kind of a mix of the two. Um, but I see it as just rock and roll. Uh, you know, I, I write actual songs. It's not just, you know, noise scapes, <laughs> you know. Can I can I ask you about psych rock, psychedelic yeah. sort of rock? Because I get a feeling that this is sort of growing a bit. Because we had um, a, a chap on, I've forgotten his name, but it was from the Nevolutionaries. Yes. And, um, he, yes. His band was really into that as well. Is that a growing sort of trend over there in the states? It really is, and it's also in Europe as as well. You know, um, there's a lot of bands that sort of, you know, a lot of followers of the Brian Jonestown Massacre. You heard of them? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, yep. Black Angels. Uh, you know, there's some bigger bands that are doing it, and there's a lot of people sort of, you know, riding the bandwagon. You know? mm. as, a, as, a listen, as a listener for me, it's one of those sort of genres that has sort of, I've not really been listened to or noticed before. Um, but in the last uh, 12, 24 months, I have been sort of listening to it, and it's slowly growing on me more and more, actually. The more I listen to it, the more I tend to find that I like it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, there's Personally, some good stuff yeah. out there for sure. And yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, like I said, it is definitely growing. A lot of young kids doing it too, and um, uh, it's a big scene. Are you able to do much in the way of um, live shows at the moment? No, no. Nice. This year's I've been all about recording and putting yeah. out. Uh, you know, we put out an anthology uh, release recently, double record of our, our, our all of our EPs. Those are the songs I sent you. Oh have you yeah. Gone on to the the live stream hype. Have you been doing any live streams, John? No, because uh, when the when COVID started, uh, one of our band members moved out of town, and uh, so we're kind of um, not really live ready yet. No, fair enough. Not everyone's been on it, but um, I know a lot of the youngsters who are on on point with the tech <laughs> yeah. have um, been sort of doing these live streams to sort of supplement the loss of uh, the live shows. But obviously, they're hopefully slowly going to start coming back from next year. So agreed. So, uh, so tombstones in their eyes. I can't see the light. Tell me and Dan a little bit about this, and then we'll uh, 
we'll play this here. Well, that's an early song from our uh, first EP, and um, it is probably our most popular song. It was featured in a Netflix show called Chambers with Uma Thurman. Not a oh, wow. super great show, but uh, for a small band like us, it was a nice boost. And uh, it's, you know, basically written about sort of depression and, uh, you know, yeah, not sort of, you know, it's about depression. Yeah. And uh, I was, you know, in a down phase and that's where music helps me to heal. I, I get a lot of it out through that, you know. Um, so, so yeah, it's I can't see the light, you know, uh, when I get down. That's one of the lyrics. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're going to put you on hold here on Skype and... Uh... When we come back, we will keep chatting here with Sean. Right now, it is a great track here on Air National Live. We are going to go back to our guest here, and uh, John, you 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 uh, <laughs> you put some really cool stuff together. That that track was uh, pretty amazing, my friend. Thank you, I appreciate it. Like I said, it's one of our more popular. Definitely, it's actually our more, most popular song by far because of the show, and also because it's a good song, I think, and uh, it's very simple. So, how do you end up getting the call to have your song on a Netflix program? Uh, we have a <laughs> publishing company called Red Queen Music that shops our stuff around to various, uh, you know, film and TV. So that's that's the only hit so far. <laughs> that's pretty amazing, Dan. We 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 we've we've, we've had some uh, 
really interesting musicians with some interesting stories the last couple of weeks, my friend. We do, uh -huh. and I, I've still got to get my head around this whole publishing thing and how you get these publicists to do this for you. I think the key is finding a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, yeah, many congratulations on that. Um, what's What have you got coming up? Uh, we just finished an album called, uh, well, it's going to be called Looking for a Light, and uh, we're just getting the artwork done right now. We uh, have sort of signed to a new label. Uh, it's going to be a co production with our old label somewhere cold records and the new label is called kitten robot records so it'll be a sort of a slash <laughs> and uh it's a kind of a step up the new label has a you know a good pr person and uh uh you know uh have more of a team behind us you know which would be nice good stuff That's now I've, I've got to, i've got to come back to the guitars quickly because <laughs> you've got you've got so many <laughs> yeah. i want to know which one's your favorite do you go to the electric um, every time, or? Yeah, my favorite is the uh, Gretsch uh, that I'm holding right now. Look at that. Um, That's yeah, expensive. It's, <laughs> it's not, it actually. I, I used to have a 64 version of this. This is actually the reissue version, oh, so wow. it wasn't too bad. The old one kept going out of tune, <laughs> so uh, I eventually sold it. You still get on the acoustic guitars much? Uh, not a lot. I'm an electric guy. Cool. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. You 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 yeah. you you've got quite the story, my friend. Uh, I'll oh, have yeah? to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been through a lot. You know, um, it's been an interesting life. Um, you know, I'm happy to be here where I am now. You know. Have you been able to do much uh, traveling? Not obviously this year, but um, previous years. Yeah, uh, back in the, you know, when sort of uh, the independent rock scene was uh, blowing up in the late 80s and early 90s, I uh, managed a friend's band and we did a couple of tours of Europe and uh, a couple of tours of the States. And that was uh, awesome. I mean, 26 yeah, years old, being touring Europe for free, uh, you know, with a popular band was amazing. Back then as well. Yeah, no, they loved us then. Yeah, pre-internet, yeah. pre-email, mobile phones. Oh, nothing. no mobile phones. <laughs> None yeah, of that. Use, you had to use maps, you know. Yeah, oh, maps. Do you remember maps? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, we're driving along wrong with it spread out across the windshield, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Can't all about those. No, it was great. You know, we got to spend some time in London as well, both times, and uh, that was fun. And Can you remember whereabouts in London you were, where you stayed? Not really, but I do know that one place we stayed, we went across the street to a coffee shop, and there was uh, Mick Jones from The Clash. Wow. And, uh, we kind of bothered him a little bit. <laughs> we got him on the have his coffee. Sorry, Mick. So, the, the song Nothing Here, tell us about yeah. this, and then we'll play this here in a that few minutes. That was actually... You know, like, I write all the songs, basically, in this band. It's my sort of project, my vision. But this is a song that was written by our guitar player, Josh, and it's Fantastic. Uh, a different kind of feel, and that's why I chose it. Um, it's a little slower, a little uh, more psychedelic, I guess you could say. And, um, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll see when you hear it. But, um, yeah, like I said, it's one of the few not written by myself. Fantastic. Well, we're going to play it, and uh, when we come back, we'll wrap things up here on
that is nothing here, and uh, we go no. back yeah. to uh, DJ Dan and John. And uh, John, you you just have some incredible music here. How, how do people buy it and get involved with what you're doing and support you, my friend? Uh, the best place to go for physical media is somewhere called Records dot bandcamp dot com you can get our vinyl there you can get cds you can get digital downloads otherwise we're on spotify and all the other various uh you know streaming services uh and we have you know we have a facebook presence an instagram presence twitter presence so if you anyone wants to look us up and say hi they can do that fantastic well we appreciate you making time for us today and being on with us, this definitely has been a uh, an amazing interview. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, thank, thank you, John. you very much, both of you. I appreciate you having us or me on. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, I'll thank pleasure. you, John. Appreciate it. Have a, have a good night. There he goes, and uh, we have our final guest for the evening. Hey, guys. There he hey. is. Uh, I have I have now done the trifecta. I have now had Robert on. All three of the radio programs that I'm involved in. He has been on the iHeart Show. He has been on with Jay Bird Wells. And he is now on with DJ Dan here on International Live. And uh, so Robert Save has the a... best to last. Yes, yes. Robert, you have a very interesting story. Tell me and Dan a little bit about your... What you do with music. You do all sorts of amazing things. Well, yeah, I'll try to give a kind of a cliff notes uh, of, of what I've... I guess some. I've been working with and what I'm currently working with. Uh, so I've been doing uh, rock, synthwave, pop kind of stuff for probably, God, about maybe 10 years. Uh, I've starred in about uh, 10 or so rock opera productions in the region. Uh, everything from Jesus Christ Superstar to Progressive Metal Sweeney Todd to uh, a bunch of productions that were original ones from the Baltimore Rock Opera Society. Uh, it's been pretty crazy. Uh, I've taken a lot of those elements and fused them into my original music. Um, my main band, or one of my main bands, Thrill Killer, has a 80s cinematic music film universe, uh, complete with DeLoreans, time travel, special effects, uh, <laughs> martial arts scenes and stuff. Uh, we have a third installment coming out next month of that series, uh, which had some great connections I had from a, a gig I did uh, with the Symphony, or the, um, sorry, the Concert Artists of Baltimore, which is, was basically a, a PNC-sponsored event alongside the Baltimore Rock Opera Society and the uh, Full Symphony and all this stuff, and I managed to grab that hall, so we have like a final fight scene there and all this other crazy stuff. Uh, so I got that. I work with uh, Megatronics, which is a progressive metal synthwave uh, band. And recently, I've been signed to Aztec Records as a synth pop artist under the name of Power Rob, which is also a name I go by in some of the metal circles I've been using for years. Um, but yeah, I keep busy with that. I teach voice from a day job and uh, some voiceover work and such and stuff here and there. Damn. Very good. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you. Jump in there, okay. baby. <laughs> so I, I'm a, you know what? I, I love synthwave. Yes, and that's part of the reason wave, why I have you really weird, tuned in. There. I was like, wow, wow <laughs> brilliant. We've had um, Becca on, um, who's a synthwave artist. We're trying to get Nina. Do you know Nina? Yeah, she's on my label. Wow. Uh, yeah, she's great. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Nina. Yeah. I'm definitely going to be going to look up your work after sure. this. Um, definitely going to be checking that out so yeah great to have a synthwave artist on um you've got so much on you're doing so much yeah how how do you how do you how do you do it all well uh it was kind of i think when the when the pandemic stuff hit uh live shows kind of didn't become a thing for a while so i used that to catch 